Hey everybody, welcome back to the clinicaltrialsguru.com. Really quick video. I'm batching these videos. I've been so busy. Thank you for the questions. Keep them coming. This one's from someone who will remain anonymous. So send me your emails, dan at theclinicaltrialsguru.com. Subscribe on YouTube. Subscribe on the blog. Here's a question about placebo, and it says, Dan, would love for you to do a quick video about placebo and why it's used. Uh, I was poking around the net, and everything seems so ambiguous on this subject. Why not just compare what isn't working against the study drug? And that's done sometimes. That's done in cancer studies. That's done in life-threatening, in, in studies for life-threatening conditions in the U.S. Now, it's not done on life-threatening condition studies in India. And that is one of the reasons why there was so much concern. Um, they were using placebo. And the reason people use placebo, see, in the United States, for life-threatening conditions, you can't use placebo because of the IRBs. There's no, there should be no undue harm or unnecessary harm on the trial participants. And if you're in a cancer study and you're on placebo, obviously that's going to potentially cause harm. The IRBs don't want that. Uh, but overseas, they do it all the time. And um, the purpose of placebo is the reason why pharmaceutical companies like placebo is that it separates so well what they call separating from placebo. They're looking for that. They're looking for the therapeutic benefit of the study drug. And that is much more clearly seen and more evident when you're comparing the investigational product versus a placebo rather than when you're comparing the investigational product versus another study drug. Sometimes these drugs are very similar and it's very hard to prove that this drug is working and this drug is not uh, because if a drug is approved already, chances are it works to some degree. So it would be very difficult uh, when the drug company would present this data to the FDA to show that this drug actually is any better than what's currently on the market. So they use placebo to be able to clearly separate. So for example, in schizophrenia studies, which is what we do a lot, um, when they use placebo in the studies, it's pretty obvious to the psychiatrist or whoever is interviewing the subject um, whether he or she's on placebo or the study drug. I mean, they'll start hallucinating. They really start decompensating. That clearly separates the study drug from placebo and in the CRO and the sponsors um, argument is that when they present this to the FDA it's good data for them to say okay this really does work as opposed to using it against another another drug which they do sometimes sometimes the FDA wants to prove that this works better than that drug uh, in those cases the FDA already told the sponsor that they will not accept the placebo they want to prove that this works better than that drug that's currently on the market but in cases where especially for indications where there aren't that many treatments placebo is the gold standard because it's supposed to separate well and if a drug if an investigational product really does not work it won't separate against placebo and you won't see any difference so hopefully this answers your question let me know if it doesn't I want to give a shout out to my clinical trial guru producers that's Sarah Elizabeth Siegler Resolve Research Solutions Accurate Clinical Trials, Earth Heart Clinical Trials, PTNR, Patrick Stone, Darshan Kulkarni, Biofarm Systems, Zymar, Mozio, South Coast Clinical Trials, Breakthrough Clinical Trials, St. Paul Medical Research Center in Miami, Florida, and keep the questions coming and subscribe, like, and if you're watching on the blog, drop comments and subscribe to the blog, all right? Thanks, everyone, and stay tuned for more videos.